when people come to me with a broken clock, I quite often land up sort of trying to fix the customer as well in a strange kind of way because they often have much more broken than the clock. And um, many, many times I've had people turn up um, and the clock repair almost gets forgotten about and sort of three hours later they walk back out again having agreed to my estimate, fortunately. Um, but having actually spoken about, I don't know, the suicide of their child or their experiences as a mercenary in Africa or um, you know somewhere they've just been to do with the trade in oil, somewhere very frightening or all manner of things like that. And uh, I don't know, for some reason they seem to think that I can listen to it and understand it. And maybe nobody else listens, so maybe that's my job, I don't know. So in that sense, maybe that's my real role, you see. I often think I should be fixing people rather than clocks, but I just haven't worked out how to do it. I sometimes wonder why it is that I was particularly drawn to clocks or mechanical antiques when I could have been buying and selling glass or porcelain or something. And I landed up dealing with these horribly difficult things that, you know, do go wrong and uh, have to be fixed all the time. I don't know. I suppose my brain was engaged in some way and I really enjoyed delving into them. There's that sense of putting life back into them when they work again. They're often designed in a very intricate and very intense sort of way and that, that appeals to something in me. So whilst I enjoy the simplicity of an earthenware jug or something like that, um, there's something about the complexity of the design of a lot of clocks, both mechanically and visually on the outside that I find quite appealing. It just takes, takes one's mind to a different place. I don't know whether being a horologist would be described as, for me, whether I described it as a, as a way of life, or whether I had a way of life and being a horologist fitted into it. 
most of the people I know that are horologists, they, um, I wouldn't exactly say they're anarchists, but they certainly have a picture of their life that is more than just work. And the, the clock repairing is something that enables one to, to earn a living, but not necessarily at a precise time in the day or the week. So um, there's an inbuilt sort of flexibility. In fact, there's an essential flexibility because there are certain days when it's just not possible to do clock repairing. So you sort of you have to concentrate your energies into the times when when you know you're going to be successful. And at the same time, most of us have perhaps gone into this field to have a degree of control over how you spend your time, so that you can have a stack of work waiting to be done, and you can go into that stack when you're ready to do some more work, choose something that you feel like doing on that particular day and then really get engaged with it. But equally, if you don't feel like doing anything on a particular day, you just go off and uh, you know do something that's not clock repairing.